you're listening to Corb Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chawla and Sharavana Raghavan. Measure what you treasure was one of our early episodes and uh, that had a lot of listeners writing in and asking questions and in that you would ask marketers to measure the key parameters cost effectively if they wanted to see those parameters improve now there have been a lot of requests coming in asking for greater clarity seeking to know how you go in depth into it and how these emerging businesses themselves can do their own market research so this episode i'm taking the opportunity to ask you the hard questions on how we can set up diy market research in emerging businesses okay to start from the basics there are two kinds of market research qualitative and quantitative can you start off by telling us the difference between the two okay so uh, let's talk about qualitative and quantitative research now qualitative research is about taking some kind of a stimulus to the consumer then getting a quick reaction if it allows you to ask a number of questions go in depth with your wise what it also allows you to do is to create some kind of iterations so suppose you have taken some kind of a concept to the consumers now you realize that the consumers are giving some kind of a feedback you can ask the consumers to hypothesize that suppose i change my concept and i say this what would be your reaction so therefore a possible iteration on the spot is possible you can have a lot of open ended discussions which could or might not be related to the stimulus and all of this when done in a fairly open informal setting consumes what is called as qualitative measurement i have seen that most of the small setups yeah like startups etc they find this one very very useful because it allows them to do alpha beta gamma testing and you know it does not put them into the trope of you know find trying to find 30 consumers in each bucket etc etc and most importantly in startups it is the senior leaders the founders and the business owners etc who are wanting to meet the consumer and build their convictions so i think qual research or qual uh, method is ideal for senior leaders to build their own convictions now let's go to quant now quant as the name indicates it's all about capturing quantitative scores now if you want to capture quantitative scores at a uniform level across every consumer that you have chosen to meet you will need to decide certain parameters yeah on which you ask the consumer to score you so therefore there has to be a pre decided questionnaire you will have parameter wise scores and via those parameters via those questions you can only dis- ask the pre defined what's and hows you can't do too much why then in qual we spoke about doing some kind of iterations right basis consumers reaction you don't have that space here here you have a pre decided stimulus and you can have multiple stimulus but all of them all of those have to be pre decided you can't innovate on the go we spoke about open ended discussions in qual in quant the discussions are surely closed ended yeah aimed at getting the consumer to respond quantitatively to a certain set of questions that you ask now similar to what i said earlier quant more often than not is ideal for large setups and i've seen a lot of marketing teams using quant to build conviction of their management into something that they are saying Hmm. that's an interesting perspective quant tells you the what and the how and qual tells you the why now is there a specific order in which they should be used does quant precede qual or the other way around or is that very fluid depending on the objective in mind so sharan this is how i see it if you don't use the formal definition of research per se even a quant starts after somebody has made some kind of conviction and stimulus in their head 
and that conviction and stimulus must have come from some kind of qual interaction yeah a brand manager a category head a marketing head or a you know senior leader or a startup owner or a business owner something must have triggered in their head after they would have seen some kind of consumer interaction or they would have had a consumer interaction themselves that would lead them to create some kind of stimulus and then take them towards should i do uh, a slightly wider qual to strengthen my conviction or should i do some kind of a quant to see how how true this is so therefore it has to start with some kind of qual and then can branch out into quant in fact in the later years of my marketing stint in uh, cadbury we used to do quant plus qual so you you would commission a quant agency to do quantitative measurements with the consumers now amongst the consumers who where we wanted to know a little bit more the quant agency after they have taken the feedback would send them to a separate room where a qual team would be sitting so therefore you would combine them so qual actually Uh, can proceed as well as succeed quant and hence i think that the deepest convictions in your hearts get created by qual research quant only helps you uh, add weight to your arguments right now while qual and quant are important for a non engineer like me a, the quant sounds a lot more intimidating and complex so let's get a little deeper on the quant side of things no actually conducting the research is fairly easy uh, if you have your thought process clearly made up in your head then you should be able to frame a question fairly logically yeah and quant is significantly about uh, pre deciding information areas and the consequent branchings wherever they are needed for example let's say uh, you're trying to meet consumers to determine whether a particular app suppose a fantasy gaming app like dream 11 works for them or not yeah so therefore you have you are a new player new fantasy gaming app player you've just launched now you want to compare your app to dream 11 suppose that's your objective yeah one way is to do qual go sit with a uh, teenager show them your apps and ask them to experience and tell it to you the other is that uh, you go to specific set of teenagers now when you go there because you are wanting to do quant you would pre decide information areas yeah now in your information areas obviously you would possibly hypothesize what are the key one or two things where which really matter to the consumer and therefore those are the ones that i definitely want to compare myself against dream 11 but there are some more things that i might as well ask yeah so possibly you know i'm just hypothesizing on the basis you know whatever little i know of this industry you might say that ux user experience of how easily one can go in what is the load time how easy are you able to find your uh, groups that you want to enter the teams that you want to make etc etc that's one point number two possibly is price winnings yeah so therefore these are the two critical ones but since i am forming a pre decided questionnaire i'll possibly say the first question possibly will be about do you like the logo what does the logo signify to you i will have one two three four four things there i will do an efls where we'll say do you like this logo if the person says no then i will have few more branchings to say you don't like it because tuck 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 yeah and you try and capture that now right. when you get to the meat of it you will say that because first you will try and capture absolute scores so you will for example if my app is called uh, my dream app yeah mm. versus dream 11 so i'll say uh, when you went through the entire journey of forming your team on my dream app how easy was the process please rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 1 is uh, very difficult and 10 is very easy mm. so i get a first i get a absolute score done yeah on various parameters similarly how attractive do you find the prize winnings right on a scale of 1 to 10 then i will put my competitor in the mix and i'll say now 
now that you've experienced dream 11 also now tell me as compared to uh, dream 11 how easy or how good do you think the cx or consumer experience of my dream app was mm. yeah better than way better than dream 11 better than dream 11 ex exactly same as dream 11 poorer than dream 11 and very poor as compared to dream 11 that mm. you know those five six options i'll put and i'll ask them to rate similarly attractiveness of prize winnings right that as compared to dream so this is how you keep making your you know questions hmm. and wherever you think you would want to delve deeper you would have to hypothesize on basis of on on your on behalf of your consumers and you would have to create an if else loop yeah what loop is that if else loop so right. if the consumer says then i will ask this else i will ask this got it you create keep creating those loops and therefore it becomes a fairly comprehensive large questionnaire so a big battle is won when you have already designed a good questionnaire and which gives you the sort of output that you really need right so how long can the questionnaire be is there a limit to the number of questions you can ask the respondent see ideally people say that anything more than 13 or 14 questions or more importantly anything more than you know 16 to 20 minutes becomes irritable Right. For any consumer, yeah. Mm. And now it also depends, Sharon, on how are you doing this. There are, for example, independent center testing where you ask consumers to come to a certain place. They come by, sit on a desk, talk to you, and then they go away. In such settings, you can expect the consumers will give you 15-20 minutes, yeah. Now, sometimes you are trying to conduct this research in consumers' natural settings. For example, homes, colleges, canteens, etc. There you, you might not get 15-20 minutes. Yeah, You might only get 10 minutes. So therefore, that's one defining scenario. But otherwise, the research rule says that anything more than 16-20 to 20 minutes tends to then, you know, numb down the consumer and the consumer will then give you random responses. Right. Yeah. Be very sharp in the kind of questions you want to ask. Correct. And ask yourself, you know, while you're designing the question, what will I do if I get the answer to this question. Exactly. What's the actionable? Yeah. If if it has an actionable, very good. If it does not have an actionable and you have to think about it, then junk the question. So that's the first point that you have to do significant amount of decision making when you're making your questionnaire. The second is about recording without bias. As a founder, business owner, brand owner, etc., etc., too often you tend to take umbrage <laughs> or you say, okay, how, how dare the consumer say this? Or you start defending to the consumer response. So that's something you can't do. You just record what they are saying. You don't even start concluding. And that's why this is quant because the conclusion happens towards the end. That's when you say how many, what percentage of people are saying this or not. If first five consumers completely junk your concept, it does not mean that the concept is poor. Number two, even if all 30 junk or all hundreds of them junk, which means the concept was really poor. So it is perfectly fine. So therefore, approach it very, very objectively without any bias and respect the consumer feedback. Third piece in quant is around, you know, being statistically correct. So depending on how many buckets are you going to cut your data into, you will need to determine the number of respondents that you go to. Suppose you're doing a research around app, like we said, my dream app versus dream 11 now you launch this app suppose you say that i want to study the results of this this research i want it in four buckets so adult uh, men adult women teenage boys teenage girls each bucket the score to be read it has to be statistically significant and the definition of statistical significance says that each bucket has to be at least 30 respondents. So therefore, 30, 30, 30, 30, you would have to go to 120 respondents for sure. You're listening to Cobb, conversations on the business of brands. Your hosts are Sudeep Chawla, marketing practitioner, business leader, an educator to advertising and marketing professionals and Sharavana Raghavan of Vitral Brand Expertise, growth consultants to consumer-facing brands and businesses. 
for more information go to cobcast.net if you find this podcast helpful please help us by telling your friends and rating us but sharan what ha- starts happening is that as brands start becoming bigger and they start expanding then they start realizing that india is not one india exactly that is actually going to be my next question where should i ask these questions is it in my city of operation should i go into a specific market and do this so that's the million dollar question now if you are a pan india brand you would realize that every state is different every town class is different so therefore you would have to hypothesize for yourself what is going to be a representative set that you are okay with now there are various ways to cut it and i've seen a number of those ways so for example one of their first ways possibly will be look at your core markets and growth markets yeah or core markets and competition markets for example and look at them very differently yeah because there is a reason why you have core markets where you have a higher market share and there is a reason why you have competition markets where you have a low it's not just presence of competition it is acceptance of competition and hence that it is got to do something with what the consumer believes similarly people cut the market by high penetration and low penetration even if you don't have competition there are various ways of going about it and if you notice sharan i have not used demographic classification in cutting them these are all attitudinal segmentations how they are behaving vis-a-vis my brand so those are two three principles that i will say are fairly critical for anybody to get into quant yeah which is one is about framing your questions very carefully and doing the consequent branchings number 2 recording and listening to consumers without any bias without any prejudice and number 3 uh, deciding who and where to ask and you know for every bucket that you want to cut your data into you need to have a minimum of 30 respondents per bucket right perfect i think that kind of simplifies quant even for a person like me let's move into the call section let's go deeper into saying what we should keep in mind when doing a call research hmm call is an interesting one i expect a lot of our startup business owners and brand owners etc to uh, take it to call for sure because it helps them achieve their objectives in a much more comprehensive manner when you're doing a call you need to first think about who are you going to go to who are you going to speak to because you are going to have a conversation with somebody sometimes you tend to choose people whom you are comfortable with so first consideration sharan in this is choosing the right representative tg second is choosing the right stimulus stimulus is that you are finally going to take some kind of a reaction from the consumer to a certain proposition or a proposal so either it is a product or it is some kind of an app or it is some kind of a story or it's some kind of a concept anything something for them to react to correct something for them to react to so that's called stimulus so you have to choose the right stimulus then third is once you have the right stimulus you have to ask the right questions and right follow up questions and there are some principles there that if you are aware of you would possibly end up doing it better last but not the least is using the right questioning techniques and there's a little bit of a uh, you know uh, nuance there uh, which it which if employed can help you generate the right responses from a consumer without them feeling really conscious about it so let's get into choosing the right tg since you are not employing an agency you are going to do it first hand one of the first things that a startup owner uh, you know comes to their head is let's go to my friends or family or family or my employees and yeah. ask them for the reaction to this ask them to the reaction <laughs> it's good you ask for their reaction but don't mistake it for your consumer's reaction absolutely yeah so my suggestion would be to to go find your consumers stand outside a shop and see who comes and buys even if for example you can't find your consumer that way if you have to go via your contacts so go to your con contacts of your contacts people who are your secondary and tertiary contacts and therefore their need to be biased towards you will be significantly lower now second is uh, this is something that sharan 
you and I have covered in the past is that when you are choosing consumers to go to and if you are wanting to make buckets as we were saying earlier and you want to talk to two three kinds of consumers ideally you should choose them attitudinally and not demographically yeah so you might want to for, therefore say that i want to go to my brand acceptors and my brand rejectors yeah so that's how you should choose third is that when you are going to meet your tg it is always ideal to meet them in neutral or natural surroundings so when i say neutral what i mean is don't get the consumer to come to your office that is going to be disastrous so therefore it is better that you go to them meet them in their natural household yeah meet them in their house meet them in their open area somewhere near their house in a park etc etc where they feel comfortable yeah finally in all of this the comfort of the target segment is of paramount importance because only when they are comfortable will they be their honest self with you yeah so those are the two three points around choosing the right representative tg and some key pointers just keeping them in mind will take you to the right set of people now second part is around choosing the right stimulus you could choose anything and everything which allows you to express the proposition to your consumer so therefore don't worry about the form format of the stimulus if you think that you can tell a great story you might as well narrate it to the consumer it doesn't matter yeah if you want to write it down please write it down if you want to describe it please describe it if you've made a demo of it please take the demo along yeah if you have the product itself very good take the product along is just that you would have to be clear that the closer you are to the product whatever your stimulus is the closest it is to the product the better quality response you will get from the consumer yeah when it is in at concept stage all of us tend to overstate some of the benefits and understate some other benefits without realizing which one of these is more important for the consumer the closer your stimulus is to the product the consumer discovers whatever is good for them or not good for them and they will then narrate it back to you so just try and you know take it to whatever completion finishing that you can and take it to the consumer and this can be used for product it can be used for advertising anything any digital creative also all of that works and most important in anything that you take to the consumer just make sure that you are stating whatever is going to be true to your product whatever you will be able to deliver on make only that promise and once you do that you know accept the consumer's reaction so let's move to the next one which is about asking right questions and right follow up questions so for example one of the very simple but very powerful concept that somebody told me and i would like to share it with everybody is the power of five whys the concept says that if you ask why five times it will more often than not lead you to an insight yeah just keep asking why so for example uh, you are a real estate developer you are researching uh, amongst you know high net worth individual uh, and you want to show them a particular project real estate project and you want to research what is the kind of likability that they are showing so at your first instance when you ask them that okay this is the project this is how it is what do you think would you buy it the person would possibly say for example no and you ask and you have to ask this politely you can't interrogate them yeah as to why do you think why do you why would you not buy it they would state something up front then you would have to peel the onion ask the second why third why fourth why fifth why and by the fifth why you land up on something which is which can be called an insight and usually my experience has been that it uncovers an emotion or a belief which is leading to a certain attitude or a behavior so it it could be things like for example this buying this house wouldn't make me look good in front of my friends or my peers now that's a belief something in your property or its location is making him or her believe believe that and that is something that you have to discover and try and correct now how do you ask that questions is what my next point is about using the right technique we said that we want to make the consumer 
feel very comfortable right so therefore uh, let's get couple of things out of our way one is that your the place that you choose your mannerisms how you dress up how you address them etc have to be aimed at making them comfortable so be aware of where you are going who are, who you are going to meet and therefore choose the place your own mannerisms your way of talking your dressing etc accordingly second is that uh, don't immediately start with your product or your category yeah the interaction is significantly about them their emotions their belief and they would bear their emotion and their belief with you not because you are asking them to but because they will start feeling comfortable with you and therefore the formula is that if you've got half an hour with them out of that half an hour ideally 25 minutes should be about them only and it should not therefore uh, you know involve any talk about your category brand product etc etc it is the last 5 minutes which are reserved for it yeah because finally what you are going to uncover is their deepest emotions beliefs etc and for that all of this is needed now one more technique that i learned uh, from some of the research partners that i worked with and i really saw the power of it uh, during various research sessions that we had is what i call as projective technique yeah now in india especially but world over also when you talk to a consumer and ask them to react to something all of them have this innate fear that their reaction would reflect on them in spite of the fact that they might or might not know you now that could lead to people not giving you the right sort of reactions or their truest feelings therefore usually researchers employ what is called as projective technique and in projective technique what they do is they ask the person to project it on somebody else yeah for example you are a real estate guy talking to an hni now an hni would possibly never tell you that this your property is situated in an area you are you have an excellent property but it is situated in an area which is considered low society by my peer group they might not want to say it on your face so therefore the technique that you employ is that you say ki uh, you know you have a friend who stays in us he doesn't he or she doesn't know anything about india and they've just come here and the first thing that they want to do is invest into property yeah so therefore what do you think their considerations will be 1 2 3 4 5 and which areas do you think they will include and not include or the other way around if they were uh, moving around and looking at all properties what do you think they will like and dislike about this property now since it is their friend who has come from us talking it does not reflect on them so therefore you know we spoke about four considerations choosing the right tg not going to your contacts but con- contacts of your contacts number 2 is about having a certain stimulus as close to the product as you can so that you can get the right response third was about asking the right questions and follow up questions yeah and fourth one was around the right techniques and within the technique you know the key thing is about making them comfortable talking a lot more about them versus you and your product in your category and keep in mind the projective technique whenever you think that the tg might become uncomfortable sharing their truest reaction to something that you asked ask them to project it on somebody else lovely sir i think is a very very useful episode thank you so much for the time thank you sharan thank you for listening to corp conversations on the business of brands with sudeep chawla and sharavana raghavan subscribe and learn more at corpcast.net that's c o b b c a s t dot net